everyone. Welcome to today's session. We are here with some excellent uh, contributors able to tell us a little bit about their involvement in STEM subjects. And I will turn it over to Karen Darnell to do some introductions. Thanks, Amy. Um, I'm here with a couple of my colleagues, Hifo Tabasula and Kathleen Rempt, and all three of us have worked in process improvement in healthcare for a while. And we, uh, what we do is we, um, in a hospital, in a doctor's office, sometimes even in insurance, we try to make things better. You know, things can go wrong, things can be not efficient, and we try to improve healthcare. And we do that with our skills in math and technology. And the, so those are definitely STEM subjects. And Amy's gonna ask us some questions about our jobs. We're just gonna talk for a little while. And uh, it's great to be here with you, thank you. Great. Uh, so Kathleen, you know, what do you do in regard to process improvement? What type of projects do you improve? I can, you know, kind of take this opportunity to talk about one of the, you know, largest projects that I've had the opportunity to work on. Um, and that is um, helping to improve processes in our ERs um, across um, our healthcare organization. And so what that involves is really going to the site you know, doing like an assessment with the people, you know, who work in that department um, to really try to highlight problem areas of their processes. Um, so a perfect example would be the time it takes a patient, you know, to walk into the ER lobby. And then from that time um, to the time that patient can actually see a um, healthcare provider, um, you know, so I'm sure that, you know, some of us have been to the ER and it has been, you know, hours upon hours of having to wait in our lobbies until we um, have contact with somebody who can examine us. And so what my team would do is, you know, come in there and talk to the staff, you know, talk to the healthcare providers, um, and, you know, come up with a plan for, you know, how can we take this process? How do we make it so our patients, you know, don't have to wait so long before they can get, you know, treated for the reason they're, you know, coming to the ED. So that involves putting together process maps, you know, outlining exactly what each person does. You know, that involves taking um, equipment from one area and, you know, moving it to another area, you know, so it's closer and so the staff don't have to walk, you know, all over their area to, um, you know, get the tools that they need. The end result is really, um, you know, being able to communicate with the frontline staff who actually provide those services, you know, get, them, you know, to kind of take ownership of, you know, how their department runs and, you know, to get their ideas for, you know, what can we do to make it better? And so that, you know, involves, you know, a lot of communication, a lot of trust, a lot of, you know, really connecting with um, the people that you are, you know, trying to partner with. And so I can say that, I think um, when we were doing the project, we managed to kind of travel to like 10 to 20 different EDs. And so, you know, that was a really good experience because, you know, one hospital is not like another hospital, right? Like they all have their different, you know, processes, types of patients that they see and, you know, types of services that they're able to provide. So, you know, it's a very good learning experience for, you know, healthcare operations and really, you know, understanding what needs to happen to get change. And people, do you um, do something similar for process improvement or would you have a different example you could share? Um, so my experience is very similar to Kathleen's um, with working in the hospital and working on processes that allow patients to move through in a quicker way and that they're, they are 
not waiting. Um, a lot of my experience was more with the operating room and making sure that patients were getting through the operating room in a timely fashion. What we did, one of the projects that Karen and I were working on was actually watching, following a patient through from the time they walked into the hospital to the time they left the um, recovery unit and timing, literally sat there and timed <laughs> how long they would be waiting in between each step and then using our tools in data analysis to really um, figure out, okay, on average, a patient could be waiting an extra two hours or one hour, not doing anything, waiting around in between these steps. And why is that? So then we'd find out after we we analyze the data, then we start digging into why is that? Why is it that they waited 30 minutes for these nurses to come in and pull them into the next step? And why did they wait another 45 minutes in the room for the doctor to come in? So it was very important work because you as a patient, you know, if I tell you um, at your doctor's office, hey, you're going to have surgery at seven. So you need to be there at five and you come in at five, but you're just waiting around because the process is not really great, right? That people are coming in late, something happened and they didn't have a backup plan that affects you as a patient. And for us, that's like the worst thing that could happen to us because we want you to have a good experience at the hospital. So a lot of that data analysis and those tools that we would use was used specifically to help patients have a better experience in our hospitals. And Karen, when you had done this before with other um, hospital systems, were there any type of measurable outcomes or how did you know the project had been successful? So uh, we use something, uh, we, we collect data and then we'll collect it over time. and. Um, and we'll make charts and graphs and all the things we learn in math classes. And we will, uh, we have this tool that we call a control chart that we're super, super excited about. Only math nerds like us get excited about these things, but we do. Um, and we will check to see, okay, what does the data show? So I was working on a safety uh, project to um, people who go in the hospital, sometimes things happen that wouldn't happen if they weren't in the hospital. For example, if you lay in bed too long, if you're in a hospital laying in bed too long, you could possibly get a clot in your legs and that is a dangerous thing and it can move, it can travel to your heart or your lungs, that's a problem. So sometimes they'll give you medicine to keep you from getting these clots or sometimes they'll put these squeezer things on your legs that'll just squeeze and tight and loosen and squeeze and lo loosen to make sure that you don't get these clots. And we will measure how many people get these clots. And so I had this control chart showing, okay, in 2000, the first half of 2011, this many people, second half of 2011, this many people. Now I'm going six months at a time because not that many people get these clots, but we don't want anyone to get these clots. And uh, we did a project in 2014, huge, huge drop. I mean, from the so maybe the 19 people that got it in six months in 2011. By the time we uh, did our project, we got it down to four people in six months in 2014. Uh, and we checked to make sure that that's statistically significant. Uh, probably the young women we have here today would not necessarily have taken a statistics class yet, but that would be a class that they would want to take in college in order to, um, to you know, do this kind of work to see, did what we, we, we did something, did it make a difference? We wanna approve statistically whether it made a difference or not. Yeah, obviously that's a, something that really impacted positively your patients. Right, right. You know, Kathleen, um, did you go to college and high school, in high school, were there certain types of classes that you took? Did you know you were going to get involved in this? And what kind of, what was your educational path? I did not know that I was going to be doing this <laughs> when I grew up. <laughs> um, so um, for high school, no, um, I didn't really, you know, take any classes that were, you know, kind of geared toward the um, healthcare industry. Like that just wasn't, you know, where my mind was. I think when I was 
you know, in high school. Um, I wasn't, you know, quite sure like what I wanted to do. But once I graduated, uh, you know, um, I actually wound up getting into healthcare by chance. You know, I had a very good, you know, conversation with a close friend of mine. And so she was, you know, really saying that healthcare is going to be a really, really, you know, huge industry, you know, and it's going to, you know, continue to grow, especially in the technology aspect. You know, it's constantly changing, right? They have, you know, all types of systems that, you know, really help hospitals run. And so, you know, that sounded, you know, very interesting to me. So um, I actually wound up going to school um, for um, healthcare technology. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Um, and so then that, you know, program that I was in, um, I started out with just my um, AS in um, health in formation technology. And so, you know, those classes were, you know, kind of focused on, on um, healthcare, you know, just as a whole, like of healthcare sites they have, you know, from hospitals to, uh, to clinics, you know, to surgery centers, like, you know, it um, kind of explained that, you know, how, um, health insurance works, you know, how coding works, you know, how hospitals and, and um, healthcare sites are paid, you know, for providing those services. And then, of course, the, you know, IT systems that, you know, help all that happen. So that was, you know, really, really, I think, a really good start for me, you know, and it really showed me the potential for healthcare. I actually had the pleasure <laughs> of, of um, having Karen <laughs> as one of my instructors. So that was actually, you know, a really great experience. You know, she's, um, you know, she's a fantastic teacher. Um, and so then from there, um, I, you know, continued on with my education. Um, I actually went on to get my bachelor's in um, health informatics. And that one was, you know, kind of focus more on the um, IT aspect of healthcare and, you know, how those systems, um, um, like how they talk to one another and, you know, how they help our healthcare staff get their jobs done. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, and when I started, my goal was to work in um, medical records. Um, and so I did, you know, kind of start out there and, you know, while that was interesting and I kind of learned, you know, like um, how charting works, you know, how hospitals store their records and privacy laws and, you know, compliance, that side was really interesting to me. But um, I realized that that is not, you know, where I wanted to continue to grow. You know, I really did, you know, kind of want to see more of the healthcare landscape. And so I actually wound up, you know, um, transitioning from medical records um, to being um, an analyst um, within a process improvement department. Um, and so that is where I really, you know, kind of like found my home, so to speak. And I really feel like, you know, that experience is what, you know, kind of like tied everything together for me. Um, you know, so when you are doing analytics in a process improvement department, you, you know, are, of course, pulling data and you, you know, have to have like certain, you know, communication skills, right? Like, I understand my data and I understand what I'm pulling, but, you know, how do you explain that to other people that, you know, really don't have that same knowledge as you do? Um, you know, so I was able, you know, to kind of build those communication skills. And then on top of that, just, you know, having the opportunity to work on the different, you know, projects that we did, you know, talking to the healthcare workers, you know, talking to hospital leadership and really understanding like what the, you know, challenges are in healthcare overall 
and also, you know, challenges that are facing our healthcare staff. It's, you know, one of those career paths where you, you know, have to be somebody who likes to, to learn and, you know, who likes to be challenged and, you know, who likes change. And there's, you know, constant change. <laughs> there's, you know, constant, you know, opportunities to learn. Um, so that is my start <laughs> and where I am, you know, now. And Keeflo, how do you like your job? And when, what kind of learning opportunities, continuous learning opportunities are you involved with? Um, so I love my job now. Um, Right now, my job has a lot more to do with building relationships and communication um, with outside brokers and vendors who are working with wanting to bring people to our hospitals. Um, but my um, learning experience since um, coming into this position, my experience is a little bit different in that um, when I started off, I went a very clinical route. So, you know, I did. Um, all of like the anatomy and physiology, chemistry courses, all of that so that I could have a more clinical background. And that's what my first degree, my bachelor's degree was in, was um, respiratory care. And so I worked directly with patients from that and then decided that I wanted to do a career change because I wasn't really um, enjoying it as much. And that's something that I always tell people is that, you know, you really do succeed when you're doing a job that you love. Um, and I just didn't feel like, you know, the clinical aspect of, of the hospital was my thing. So when I switched over and did my master's in inform informatics, um, which is basically data analysis and um, really looking into systems and data from the hospital perspective, um, I started to really thrive in that area and started to really understand you know, how my courses that I took in statistics and in math were very, very much needed and computer sciences were very much needed to help me get into that analyst role to really understand that part of it. But then still having the clinical background to understand where the clinicians are coming from, like talking to nurses and doctors about numbers is not something that's an easy feat, like Kathleen said. It's because if there's a disconnect, they don't really care about numbers. They care about the blood work, the patient, the well-being of the patient, the physical, scientific stuff. Whereas we were looking at numbers on how they were performing. So really having to understand how to connect that that those two with communication was huge. And I think that that's how I really started to move forward in my career. Um, and so you know, I have kind of the background of both. <laughs> um, but I love my work now. I love what I'm doing now. And I think that I'm successful because I'm doing something that I love. You know, what both of you are saying is too, is that, you know, you don't have to know right away um, to, right. Have, to have the vision of just continuing your education, seeing what's out there, um, meeting people who can influence your future um, career and opportunities is a great pathway to ultimately ending up in that position that you really appreciate. And I think that you've done a great job of outlining a field that we don't really um, see a lot in the media no. or in our day-to-day -day worlds. And so it's a great, a great um, opportunity to really have hands-on direct impact on patients and the healthcare system, but kind of be behind the scenes driving future process improvements. So I want to thank you very much for your time today. Um, you've had great insights to share and uh, we appreciate your commitment to your future, your field. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs>